Hey guys, this is a brief update on the status of Orbital for the first quarter of the year. Uh, it's been more than one year since last update, so I think it was about time for a heartbeat and giving some sort of calendar for the year. Um, just note this information is for other developers, because right now we are definitely not ready for users. Um, regarding developers, I would love to hear feedback about uh, introspection news, also requests, that would be really great. Again. No, soft, uh, no software, no source or binary releases today. Um, I need to find a release way that respects third-party licenses, IPs, so that's not going to happen anytime soon. But I hope at least this information can clarify some questions. If you haven't done so already, um, get the update 3, it's in the YouTube channel. Uh, just have a look at it because it explains the motivation behind some of those changes. Um, the major change right now, or I think the most significant for other developers, is the boot process has been entirely reworked. Previously, we had to decrypt individual kernel blocks, then reassemble them, create an elf image, copying some segment information, which had some, like, Sony sections and segments, which had to be handled in some custom elf loader in Grub. Um, also, we needed to initialize hardware and also some uh, memory regions, uh, so we needed to fork CBIOS. So all this process was explained on update 3, you can refer to that. It was a mess, and it was not compatible across, uh, you know, on all PS4 firmware versions. It was extremely brittle, uh, some memory regions contained data whose only value was, you know, like 0 or, or, or 1 or whatever, just because that did not break the boot process. But that's not a good heuristic, right? This is not good enough. And, um, well, this is the new approach, uh, which is slightly more simple. Now we uh, basically get the full 8K1 uh, 2, you know, kernel and UBIOS blob. It's fully decrypted. We implement a very simple elf loader to copy segments into physical memory, and then just reset CPU set just tweak the base because the CS base by default is not the one we need, the one the elf image has uh, as you know as, as loading uh, loading address. It's a little bit hacky, maybe there's other ways around it, but for now it works. And done. Uh, it really removes the need for for BIOS. It removes the need for um, uh, grab. And also, you know. Uh, I think once this is uh, up, uh, other developers will be able to use Orbital also to test pre-kernel exploits, which I think it's pretty great. Of course, it doesn't yield the same information as, um, you know, a real console, but at least you can see live what requests are performed to the NVS and the e EMC. Um, okay, regarding introspection, there is little I can say about that at this stage. Um, but, uh, well, here we go. Um, all we had before was uh, just what you see in here, um, in this link. It was um, some modified uh, FreeBSD headers and some UI code that consumed them. Uh, the issue with that is, again, not being compatible with all PS4 firmware versions. Uh, either that or we would have to have an entire FreeBSD trunk for every single PS4 version, which is also not quite realistic. Um, and it was only replaceable at build time, uh, cannot be changed during runtime. So if you have, if there is another, like a new PS4 version, then suddenly your uh, Orbital um, build is not compatible with, with that. I think this is not really an issue because no one is really using Orbital, but from a design point of view is um, not really a good thing. So this is solved now with dynamic type information. So basically all those headers are parsed at runtime and uh, so only the things that we need are actually parsed, which is actually good. And uh, for now, it's little information. Just I just added syscall tables and few like process and thread structures that we were using on the UI, uh, and only for 5.0. Um, I'm gonna make it a little bit more, uh, you know, more complete because I have also K SDK headers for other versions. I'm gonna merge all of that and push it in Orbis uh, dash headers. So. That's coming in a few weeks. And so that you can see a little comparison on how that looks like. Uh, in the past, we just you know had to include directly the FreeBSD header and treat it as you know part of the host code, which, which I don't think it's a good idea. Um, 
using offset of macros and just finding what whatever whatever we need and just using some very very slow um, hexam function to read memory as part of the hexam accelerator and then we could read the PID of some process right the new version just allows us to I mean this ha all happens uh, you know behind stages um, it auto detects the kernel version the Orbis version sorry and based on that it will load the appropriate headers and from there we can just as a string get the offset for some member within some class then from there from some virtual address space we read at certain offset we use uh, you know like the, the, we specify the type of, of data that we want to read and then we get the same result it's a little bit more simple but also a little bit faster because of some internal changes and the great news I think for developers is that we have convenient wrappers for accessing you know the most common uh, fields in a process so you can conveniently get it as is without worrying about offsets and about the way FreeBSD or Orbis actually represents that information in memory. So based on these two updates regarding boot and introspection, I've run a little experiment. So as you guys know, um, going past installation screens involves several changes in hardware which will take a quite long time. With fine-grain control over Orbis, we could have instead a hybrid low-level and high-level emulator. The way this would work is injecting executables and data into a virtual USB device. On a very small test I've run, I use instead uh, slash dev slash md0, which is an in-memory file system uh, just bundled with the kernel, and it works fine. Um, second step would be patching init path, which is the part of FreeBSD that loads the first user and executable and loaders because there's lots of checks and, and of course Orbis doesn't like unsigned executables and lastly hooking and emulating problematic syscalls uh, because not everything will work when half of user land space or all of user land space is missing this has some advantages over traditional high level and low level approaches it's better than high level emulation in the sense that we would not have to reverse engineer syscalls and drivers that do not I.O. Um, like threads, processes, memory time, event users, all that would be just used as is. Um, however, like you know, uh, there would be you know some some effort into patching syscalls that that really talk to hardware like graphic syscalls, but um, that's really not a major concern. And compared to low level emulators we would not have to deal with the issues above um, so I think this would be a very good point to early prototyping other areas of the emulator that we would not get to work on until much later uh, down the road it allows us to parallelize work and I think it's a good investment as an experiment and uh, as a way of uh, letting developers try Orbital earlier than otherwise would So, news regarding Patreon. Um, originally, Patreon was created to split expenses during development, um, but uh, I lately see no reason to keep it open, uh, so I have paused the billing for April and will, after that, after everyone has caught the memo, just uh, halt it indefinitely. Reason is, current surplus is enough for development and storage server costs and hardware required by me and any other future Orbital developers is covered. Um, Second reason, um, some people suggest to keep it open, but making a living out of Patreon income is not really feasible, is not wanted, so really there is no reason for me to keep this ongoing. Um, if anyone is wants to contribute to Orbital full-time, after the sources are of course uh, released, uh, it could be considered to be reopened. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason I would reopen Patreon is if Orbital is stable enough to offer support. And if so, it would be just a premium, right? It's not a universal right because it's quite tedious to answer all the you know requests on how to fix build issues, how to fix random issues. So yeah, that's it. So screenshots. Um, most efforts have been just generic emulation tooling. Uh, there is reasons why we cannot just share that part yet. Um, but most importantly, 
all the PS4 specific efforts have been done during 2019. That's where all the screenshots are. You can check the Discord server to see what the progress was back then. But during this year, or the past year actually, no significant changes have happened PS4 wise. We have worked in very early stages during the boot process and on tooling regarding introspection for uh, Orbis. Those two things don't make the emulator progress further, but they are necessary tooling to get work done faster. And calendar. So I want to keep a regular ish schedule. Uh, at least or at most <laughs> on a monthly basis um, because in May I want to release the PS4 introspection headers and demo no video then just plain release of headers and demo then release uh, Liverpool sources at some point during this year I want to release a binary version uh, probably will be heavily stripped and obfuscated because again uh, sources are uh, quite a tricky matter right now and hopefully, hopefully next year, um, releasing Aeolia and everything else regarding PS4. The reason why Liverpool comes first and then Aeolia is first, Liverpool is quite, you know, uh, harmless, so to say. There is some information in Aeolia that we cannot share yet. But um, the, again, due to licensing and IP, not because of anything else. Um, then I really hope that. A uh, full release is possible at some point using the entire software stack. I'm not a fan of closed source, but uh, if you have been following the discussions in Orbital, that's a way to go right now. So, okay, I hope you have enjoyed this small update and hope to see you soon.